welcome, welcome, savvy investors, to another live training session. Uh, for those that don't know, necessarily know who I am, I'm Mike Ponte. I'm the founder of Savvy Investor and longtime Canadian real estate investor. Boy, we got another great training session today, specifically for those that are super sick and tired of those small, mundane tasks that just come with running a real estate investing. Um, you know, kind of things like tenant management, you know, property advertising, social media. And I think everybody's favorite that drives people nuts, bookkeeping. I can't stand this stuff. So for those that are on live, join me. What do you guys hate the most when it comes to real estate investing, when it comes to administrative stuff that you would love to take off your plate? I'd love to see what everybody else is feeling other than just myself. So uh, for many investors, this is this is kind of a common thing. We get into kind of this game called real estate investing. We, we have this vision that, you know what, I want to get some freedom in my life. I get more time. But as you start to kind of start to scale your real estate business and start to kind of try to do this all by yourself, that doesn't really become a reality. All of a sudden, you're just like, I'm just busy being busy. I'm doing a lot more stuff than what I was anticipating. And this is very, very common for a lot of investors out there. At some point, you're going to have to start to delegate aspects and tasks off your plate. A lot of it is even property management tends to be the first one. And obviously, that big, ugly, the one with the B, uh, bookkeeping. Uh, and that's just, again, part of the scaling process. You have to start to kind of let go of specific things in this game, right? It's just what it is. Um, so you got to ask yourself, what is your time worth? Like truly, you know, if you went to define your cost per hour, how much would that be? Be honest with yourself. What What is your hourly charge that you would charge somebody for the time that you spent in your real estate business? Throw that in the comments. Let's hear what you guys are saying in regards to how much you feel that you actually think are your work. So the real question for investors is, what the heck can I take off my plate first that can be the most, can, that can provide the most impact in my business and more importantly in my time? So how can we streamline my business? And so to learn more about this, I am very, very honored and excited to bring our very special guest, from down south, Mr. Greg Brooks from Rocket Station Virtual Assistance, who's going to join and share some of his wisdom on the process of delegation and how we as real estate investors can be much more effective in our business. As the old saying goes, work on your business, not in your business. So a little bit about Greg real quickly, just to pump up his tires a little bit. Um, and for those of you that have, may have not even heard of Greg before, he's, he's a wonderful guy, really great resource. Um, he is a chief growth officer and a partner with Rocket Station Virtual Assistance. He oversees everything business development and marketing. He has an extensive business, a background when it comes to sales and entrepreneurship, both in the public and also the private sector. He has led a lot of different teams and in industries, including sponsorships, fundraising, consumer package goods, military resale. That, I'm sure there's some pretty good stories in that there, Greg. I be, might have to share that with us. And, and even in the hospitality side. Um, so on top of that, he's worked with a lot of top Fortune 500 companies as well. So, And he's also started uh, and sold multiple companies on his, well, his own as well. So I think he knows a little bit about delegation. He knows a little bit about business. So very, very excited to have him here. I think it's going to be a great discussion, to be very honest with you. So before we get started, I do want to highlight one thing that this YouTube live is brought to you by one of our Savvy Investor Trusted Partners, the Green Mortgage Team. Very, very excited to have them here. Green Mortgage is specializing in working with real estate investors since 2008. 80% of Green Mortgage's clients are investors, and Green Mortgage has funded over $1 billion in both commercial and residential mortgages. So if you're looking for support to help fund your next real estate investing project, reach out to the Green Mortgage Team to book your free consultation. To learn more about the Green Mortgage team, visit their website. Also, I've heard Kyle was also highlighting that he's also offering a free ebook as well. So make sure you reach out, go to the description below, take advantage of it. It's called Rockstar Real Estate Investing. So again, why not take it, take advantage of it? It's absolutely free. So visit the link in the description or visit our Savvy Investor YouTube, our Savvy Investor website, go to Trusted Partners, and you can download some resources with that as well. Now, last but not least, before we get going, this is a YouTube Live. This is for you. We're here to support you guys. So ask your questions, share your comments, fully engage in the process. This is all about you guys. Before you guys get started or before we begin, please, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our Savvy Investor YouTube channel as we want to continue to grow. Hit that notification bell. Give us a thumbs up so we can kind of keep you informed of what's going on for upcoming videos in the future as well. 
Um, so let's get to the topic at hand. And more importantly, let's make sure we invite our good buddy, Mr. Greg Brooks, to the stage. So, Greg, welcome, sir. How are you doing today? Let me just unmute you first. Perfect. No, I'm good, man. Thanks so much. I say you definitely pumped the tires up. I mean, really all that resume says is that I'm really good at hopefully building businesses and then either getting fired or selling them. So we'll, uh, we'll yeah. dive into both of those here pretty quick. <laughs> so if anybody sees Greg in the future somewhere in a real estate event, remember what I just said, military resale there, you know, I think you take them out for a beer. There's probably some pretty good stories about that. I'm sure. <laughs> oh, definitely. Yeah, just the just the Canadian kid that keeps finding all these businesses that never thought I'd know anything about. <laughs> love it, love it. So maybe just quickly, I did kind of introduce yourself, but maybe you can share a little bit about your experience, um, just in general, and at the same time, um, I know you're a real estate investor as well. Maybe you can just touch on on that as well, because guess what? We're talking to a bunch of real estate investors, so they'll probably want to hear a little bit about yourself, people that don't know you, and maybe just a little bit about your real estate investing experience as well. Yeah, definitely. I'm uh, so like I said, thanks so much for for having us on. I know we've got a great partnership, and it's great catching up with you here in 2024. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm kind of an accidental real estate investor. So aside from Rocket Station, um, my wife and I, we have a small portfolio of homes that we've just through kind of living and then having kids and needing bigger homes, been able to kind of hold on. And so I, I'm like you. I, the reason I came to Rocket Station and joined my partners here about five years ago was I knew nothing about offshore, offshore outsourcing VAs, people in other countries working for US or Canadian companies. Um, it, it was com literally completely foreign to me. My only exposure to it before really meeting my now partners at Rocket Station was I worked for for a large consumer packaged goods company. And I knew our IT out desk was somewhere in India because I would call and you know, you get the crackling and you'd be able to tell that it was not here stateside. Um, what I will say is is what kind of opened my eyes and hopefully what we'll get to here as we go through the, the programming that, that you've got is is how accessible this is now to mm. a real estate investor, whether you're kind of battling for that first deal, like we've all done, or if you have a very established portfolio and, and you're looking for some real answers to to grow and scale and, and take that next step and take on the next bigger deal or the new market, virtual yeah. staffing and outsourcing, like it really is, it's, it's just a click away now. Um, so, so like I said, quick, quick on me, I'm, I'm a Canadian as well. Canadian now living in Dallas. We were joking. We're, we're going through our 30 days of, of winter, um, here in, in Dallas with some cold temperatures, but was, uh, was a college athlete came down here. I was in, uh, was lucky enough to kind of stay here and, and do my, my, my MBA as well. Kind of found sales, worked in, in college fundraising for a little bit. Anyone that, you know, watches the NCAA on the weekends, that was kind of my world for the better part of five or six years, fresh out of college. And then kind of tried a, a lot of different stuff. You know, obviously have a, have a sales background, was a very personal person. Yeah. Worked everywhere, everywhere from CPG, like you said, to military retail, to fundraising. And kind of kind of did it all. Um, and then really got bit by that like entrepreneurial bug. Um, so yeah. I've, been, I've been here with Rocket Station now pretty much since its conception about six years ago as a standalone brand and, and been able to, to help be a, a part of a team that's grown and, and really met a market need, like you said, for a lot of real estate investors that me and my partners are to help people realize whether it's the Canadian dream or the American dream, right? A lot of us watch the YouTube and subscribe to the, the gurus that show real estate as a real path to create the future yeah. that you want. And then we jump in and realize there's a lot of work that goes into that. So we hope, you know, our goal is to be a little piece of that, to help that real yeah. estate investor, that entrepreneur, that person who's betting on themselves, really build that the company or build the team that they dreamed of. And, and more importantly, yeah. when you talk about like changing lives, like actually live that life that they probably fantasized about when they said, you know what, I'm going to try my hand at this real estate investing thing. You, you couldn't have answered that any better. So that, that I, and I hope everybody kind of paid attention to that. And I think the one word that you were highlighted was the word team. And, um, and sometimes what we're looking at is just specifically within the business in itself, property managers, realtors, contractors, and that that's all real. That, that, that you need those people in your team. But just like anything, when you when you look at business, you're going to have to add individuals or you're going to have to delegate better. You know, Greg and I were talking about, you know, just some of the things that are happening with technology. It's changing. It's drastic. It's, it's, it's crazy what's going on right now. And, and for us, the demand for our time is becoming... Um, insane like we're, we're, we get it from families and kids and work and, and you know some of many of us have got our full-time job and then we're doing this real estate thing as well and it, it, there's just a lot that tends to happen so and for, and so let me go into the question and get right into this is you know for a lot of real estate investors as and you you just referenced this 
there was a vision, uh, a why, what they're trying to accomplish. And maybe throw it in the chat, guys. Tell us a little bit about your why. Why are you doing this real estate investing thing? There's, there's a reason. For me, it was about freedom of time, spend more time with my kids and my family. Truly, that's honestly what it was. Um, but for a lot of people that are getting into this business, they didn't really treat this as a business. They really treated it as an investment. And that was a big problem is they, they become real estate investors and not come to the realization that they are now actually entrepreneurs. Okay. And what, what happens there, there comes responsibility that they were not necessarily prepared for. So, you know, Greg, this is your space. I'm sure you get a lot of people that come to you, myself included, and saying, you know what? Oh my God, I'm so overwhelmed. Um, I am so frustrated with this, 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 and this. So maybe you can highlight just in general, because I want people to, to understand that you're not the only one. If you're, you're dealing with frustrations, um, you're not the only one. So what are some of the things that you are hearing maybe from real estate investors, entrepreneurs that they are maybe really frustrated with uh, when they contact you in Rocket Station? Uh, just share some of the challenges that they face. I think just the big overarching thing, it's it's always time, right? It's there's never enough. It's it's I mean, we live in a day and age where, yeah, we, we know X or we know Amazon, but what's the name right beside it? Elon Musk. It's Jeff Bezos. Yeah. And you forget they have hundreds of thousands of people. Like they might be the name in the headlines. And as entrepreneurs, I mean, I know Michael, I feel like I know you well enough. I'm definitely like this. Like we're very prideful. You know what I mean? We go out on our own. And when you talk about real estate, real estate is a, is a relationship game. You know what I mean? It can literally be the difference between you getting that property and you not getting that property. You having a, a handyman or a maintenance guy you can rely on and someone who's going to overcharge you and, you know, cost the deal to, to go upside down. And a lot of times you kind of get get bit, I guess, by that sense of pride where you feel like in order, and, and my dad is like this, he was a 95 hour a week truck driver in Toronto, yeah. Canada. He was, if, you, if, you, if you're not the one doing it, it's not going to get done right. You know what I mean? And that is the biggest mistake that I see entrepreneurs specifically in the real estate world making, where they feel like they need to be the one that does, that touches, that executes every single thing. And when you start talking about that, that burnout, and, and I mean, we've, we've talked kind of explicitly about it, you know, yeah. real estate like this, whether it's like the market, the interest rates, totally. or just like the natural cycle of deals, the times, even for myself as, as an, as an entrepreneur, I'm sure you can relate to this. Like the times when I start to feel that burnout that we all feel on this roller coaster of, of owning your own business or being an, an entrepreneur or whatever sexy word you want to use. I usually now I say it's a developed skill. Now I take a step back and I realize I've got too many of these decisions or too many of these tasks or too many of these day-to-day -day operations pointing at me where mm. I'm the one that's holding it back. And even if you have a small team, that can also hurt them. You know what I mean? Where you've put yourself kind of in the, we, you've all seen the, the spider web analogy. Like when you're the center of that spider web, you're the problem and you're the bottleneck and you got to figure out how to develop systems and processes and hire really good people to get yourself out of that so you can operate where you're best, right? And I'm a big believer, as much as all of us think we're incredible at everything, especially in the entrepreneurial world, world we're all good at about three to four things. You got to get yeah. there. That's what's going to help your business grow. And anything that doesn't fall in those three to four or five things, you got to find people who can offset your talents and get it on their plate so that they can operate at their highest level. Totally. Uh, even Adele's highlighting the same thing too. That's a big one because it's true. Like we all deal with the burnout side. You're not the only one. If, mine actually, I'll be very vulnerable right now. You know what? December was my burnout time. I was just like done. Like I needed to shut it down. I was exhausted. And, and part of that is the realization that, you know, I have to ask my questions is like, am I being as efficient as I possibly can? Is there things that I can start to remove off my list so I can do the things that I really want to spend time doing the, the things that I really, really enjoy and will and have the best value of my time and i want to be really clear with that so it comes into the next question actually is you've seen it you've talked to entrepreneurs you're an entrepreneur yourself um and, and we tend to get really really busy we get busy with doing a lot of different things and so um as i mentioned before we get people that are now entrepreneurs they started as real estate investors and coming to the realization holy crap i'm, I'm a business operator now i didn't realize this this is, this is weird this is not what i was expecting books I don't like doing books. I don't even know how to do books. So it's strange. So they get to this kind of realization. And on the, on the flip side, they, they get into this real estate game. They're, they're all full of piss and vinegar. 
and, and they're doing amazing things or scaling their business is only to come to the realization that they've got now yet a part-time job above, over and above their existing full-time job. Or if they've scaled to another place, and I've done this myself, to full-time jobs and talk about chaotic, right? Um, so I don't know if anybody, if this is resonating with anybody, if this is resonating, let's be vulnerable together, right? Is share, share, put it on the chat if this feels like you, that you're feeling like you're running a part-time or a second full-time job. It's, it's exhausting. I, I had to do that in my early parts in my career as well. So maybe as people are kind of transitioning to, um, or sorry to say, scaling their businesses, uh, we talked about some of the some of the comments that people are coming back with uh, in regards to the frustration. Well, maybe you can highlight some of the few practical strategies that real estate uh, professionals can implement in their business to save time for themselves. So what tasks are you recommending to people that can help us save time in our lives? Yeah, and, and you said the, uh, it's a swear word over here at Rocket Station. You said that B word, busy, right? Because that, yeah. That's what happens. There's definitely levels to, to stepping into the entrepreneurial world. And a lot of us, especially if say we have a job or we've kind of been employees and we've always kind of looked up for what they, what you need to do and had a very defined role. It's tough. I mean, real estate, I, I feel like, and you can probably relate to this. I feel like a lot of people, they watch the the YouTube videos and the quick kind of five minute, this is easy. And it's, it, it seems like an ATM, like, Oh, I can do this. This isn't hard. And then you get in, you realize there's tons. Like it's a very unique business from the relationship management totally. side, from the financial side of it, to just like the paperwork, the admin, the due diligence. Like there's a lot that most businesses maybe only have one or two of these aspects and real estate's got 10, 11, 12 of them. It's kind of everything. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, a lot of it, what we find is, is as, as an entrepreneur, you've got to be able to prioritize your time. And I know everyone says that that's like the cliche thing. But yeah. you absolutely to take that first step into hiring. And, and I think we'll touch on this in a little bit. Number one, to not make a hiring mistake and hire the wrong oh, position okay. person. But yeah. more importantly, to figure out as the leader, as the visionary, as the person whose name is on the door, where do you need to get to? It, I mean, you got to sit down and, and we call it the oh shoot list exercise. And it doesn't matter if you've got hundreds of millions of dollars of real estate under management or under ownership. Or if you're still fighting to get that first deal, all of us have the same thing throughout the course of our day. The, oh, shoot, I just spent nine hours cleaning up my inbox. Or, yeah. oh, shoot, I was supposed to go meet with that contractor today and I totally forgot to put it in my calendar. So, like, there's levels to it, right? But it's it's the same list. It's the, oh, shoot, what's falling by the wayside? What are we forgetting to do? What do we, like, really? It's, oh, shoot, I don't want to do that. Like the stuff that isn't in our skill set that we do just because it's a function of the business. That's where everyone's got to start. And it's, I mean, it's, it's the new year, right? It's, it's January when we're filming this. So it's like the perfect time, the resolutions, the goals. I mean, what I tell people <laughs> is put a little piece of pocket, but take it, take an eight by 11, fold it into a nice little thing. So it fits in your back pocket. And during the course of your day, whether you're a full-time investor, or it's still part-time or it's something you're still striving to get your foot in. Just, doc, yeah. just put a dot shot every time you do something. Oh, I spent 20 minutes right here answering emails. Oh, I spent three minutes yeah. on the phone with a, with a contractor. I spent 25 minutes reconciling my books to get it to my accountant, especially now during tax time. And just get that visual. Like, see how much stuff you're doing. Because that's usually the aha moment for someone to realize, like, this is not sustainable. And, and like you said, a lot of people, when they take the first bite at the entrepreneurial apple, they don't really make the step into business owner. They make the step yeah. into self-employed, which for yeah, me true. is the dirtiest word. And you never want <laughs> to be self-employed. When you're self-employed, you are an employee tied to doing company, tasks yeah. every single day. But Real unlike good. an employer, you now have all the risk. So it's a lose-lose. You know what I mean? So just starting that with just the, that writing down, what are you doing every day? And then pick mm -hmm. three things. Limit yourself to three, no more than five the biggest impact things for you to get from one to two, right? Or zero to one, the Peter Thiel book. What are the three things on that list that you've got to be doing? And then hopefully through VAs, but through technology, through many different avenues, you've got to figure out how to get the other 20, 30, 40 things off of your plate as quickly as possible. Yeah. You know what? For those that have just listened to what Greg just said, I highly recommend it. it it's it's a, a major shock to what you spend your time in. And then you're just like looking back and you're like, what a waste of my time like truly like honestly and then it it 
it just forces you to be more efficient. Even if you haven't hired somebody and you can't afford it right now, and we'll get to all that stuff so everybody can understand it. And I think the important part is you may not be at that stage right now, but it's about also pre-planning yourself as you scale your business at some point in time. You know, I did this exercise many years ago, actually, is building an org chart. And I had lots of different duties of lots of different things. Okay, lots of different tasks, lots of different roles. And guess whose name was beside each and every single role of that task? Right here, me. I have put my name against all of that. But over time, I've been able to pull some of those things off. And honestly, it's been the most rewarding piece when I can actually attach somebody else's name in there and pulled myself away from that. So uh, Greg, you just touched on this just a second ago is in the technology side. So uh, as we've talked about kind of earlier too, like, man, technology is changing. It's crazy out there. It's a very common discussion that we have even with Mastermind, our Mastermind community and stuff. Um, and so maybe you can just share some of the tools and platforms you maybe are finding that are most effective for real estate professionals. Um, and maybe even some stuff that you guys are using within, uh, within Rocket Station as well. And it's, it's just, a, what are you recommending or suggesting for people um, to maybe systemize their business a little bit better? Um, I don't know if you're comfortable in sharing that, but it'd be, it, I think a lot of people are interested in knowing some of these things. And to be very clear, both Greg and I, we are not sponsored, at least myself, I don't think Greg is either, are sponsored by any of these social, these software programs. We're just highlighting things that are gonna help us be more efficient to systemize the business in itself. So I don't know if you have any recommendations that you're seeing as a trend in the industry right now. No, and I'll put this out there. So when the LLM picks up on it, Chad GPT, I do wanna be sponsored by you. I'm not, but I do want to be. So just when the LLM scrapes this data and puts it in there, hopefully that gets picked me up. Too. Right? Yeah, okay. Okay, me too as well, <laughs> me too as well. Yes, very good, thanks. I think I think now like it's, you know, it's technology now, everyone it's AI, it's the two big letters. It's the letters that are gonna be the letters for the next five years, it seems like. Um, I mean, I mean everything, I mean, from the social media that are, and this is both yeah. what our clients are doing as well as us. I mean, from social media posts, from, graphic generation, from advertising, from pu pulling together. We just did our end of year reviews for all of our clients and creating cool infographics to update them on yeah. the status of their VAs and how our relationship's grown. Like 80% of that, 70% of it, it's going through AI, whether it's creating the graphics or the copy or, you know, creating cool visuals. I mean, there's tons of great tools out there. Mm -hmm. I, I highly encourage anyone, especially kind of coming full circle here on, on you need to hire a virtual assistant to help you. Um, there's tons of great project management tools out there, whether it's like a monday.com or a Trello, yeah. uh, a lot of those boards, even if it is just yourself, you talk about kind of getting it out on paper. What are those hundreds of things you're doing? I have personally found and, and organization is not in my top five or 50. Michael, you probably know that from just getting this call scheduled. Um, <laughs> I have Marianne who helps me very well with that. Uh, that. Those things are hugely, hugely helpful. So there's tons of great project flows out there where, you know, yes, you can build the automations, but even just kind of having that like living journal and diary where if you do have a team, you can assign tasks out and then have that accountability checkpoint there. Yeah. Um, there there's tons of great stuff. And then, I mean, everything from the underwriting process and the data piece of it all the way through to if, if you have a portfolio and you're, and you're managing or you're self-managing, there's tons of great PMSs and pro property management softwares out there. Yeah, that whether there it's is. like lease renewals, whether it's leasing automation, whether it's um, advertising the property where it pushes it out on all the thousands of different sites out there. I mean, and, and a lot of it now we've kind of seen in the last five, six years, a consolidation, which has driven a lot of efficiency. Mm -hmm. A lot of them for less than a hundred bucks a month. I mean, it can definitely save you a hundred dollars worth of your time, even if you're just getting the entry level product offering, where you can start to kind of have some of this stuff aut automated. And and the other thing is whether it's you know the investors you're buying properties from, the owners you're buying properties from, whether it's tenants that you're you're renting and leasing to that's the experience that they want too, right? So when you're talking about kind of an all-encompassing approach, it saves you a ton of time and starts to kind of put you down the path of process and automation and literally put time back in your pocket for a minimal cost. But it's also creating a better experience for whoever's on the other side of that relationship, which I think is a win-win for everybody. I agree 100% on all points. Real quickly on the technology side, I, and I don't know how you guys are keeping up because like I said, it's every single day. Like there's something new here. Like my, my marketing team is just like, we got to get this. We got to get that. We got to get this. I'm like, okay, let's slow down a little bit. Don't, doesn't that one do that? No, it doesn't. I'm like, okay, I don't know what the heck's going on. But how do you guys, how do you guys keep up with this? Because 
you know, I joke around. I'm the old dog. I'm I, this whole this this internet thing. This whole this chat. Like this is this is new for a lot of people. How do you guys keep up with the latest trends? I think this is a, a an obstacle in itself, to be honest. Exactly. So there's two things. Number one, my favorite word in the world is freemium. All of these com mm. all of these companies, they've got the you know scratch the itch version. And, yeah. and, and, and you can get in there and try it and it won't cost you anything, right? Whether it's something to write your copy, whether it's, Hey, you've got four or five listings and you want to pump them out across all the different platforms. The, most of them have a freemium. And I'd say, try, try, try. Obviously if you are the business, you are employee number one, two, three, four, five, that's hard. Cause then yeah. we're talking about time that you already don't have. Um, but I, I encourage people use the freemiums, you know, get, get on the 30 day trial, put a note in your calendar to cancel it on day 29. So your credit card doesn't get run, but like try it all. <laughs> the other part for those of you that have teams, it's something we literally talk about weekly. So our, our mm. teams, and, and when I say our teams, I'll give some context to that. We, we definitely, you know, drink from the well that we, we sell to our clients. We've got the sales and, and marketing teams, the two main teams that I'm over, uh, we have 14 people here stateside and we have almost 40 that are overseas. Our company mm -hmm. as well, we're, we're, we're less than 20 here in the States and we're over 350 in the Philippines where all of our VAs are that support just rocket station. And every single meeting that we have, we are, we're asking people, tasking them saying, go try something. If, if there's a tool out there, don't be, don't be caught as the central source of truth for your company. Even if it's just two of you, mm -hmm. three of you. That's that's bad, right? Because then, like you said, it's relying on your time that you don't have to be the innovator. Or if that's something you like, like we just talked about, the 20 things that are stopping you from going and listening to the podcast or watching the YouTube video or getting on yeah. a sales call with somebody, you got to get the rest of stuff off your plate so you can lead that charge. But it's something that we're very intentional in talking about every single day, every single week, every single month. It's There's no dumb ideas. Bring it to the table. We're not going to approve 95, 98% of them. But there are tons of tools and tons of new upstart companies with whether it's, you know, writing our blog posts or making sure our, our Google keywords are right or mm -hmm. making sure our data is clean and scrubbing lists and pulling in investor data. There's tons of cool tools out there and there's more every single day. I don't think you can ever keep up. I mean, it's the technology age. We've all lived through it for the last 10, 15, almost 20 years now. But just being yeah. intentional, right? Because all it takes, not, not everything is going to work for anyone or for everyone, but like one little golden nugget. I mean, we use a platform. I'll, I'll give you a story. We use a platform called Jasper. And once again, not endorsed, but when the LLM picks it up, I do want to be endorsed. Um, and they, I mean, it, it writes 95% of our blog posts and copy and our copywriters now can produce literally 10 X the amount of copy for us because all they're doing is going in and putting the actual knowledge in there. And it takes them 10% of the time that it did when they used to have to brainstorm topics and optimize it for Google and all that stuff yep. that takes real hours out of your day. So when you, efficiency, 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 that's the name of the game. And just be intentional, ask people, try it, make sure everyone's bringing something to the table. And if they're not in this day and age, you know what I mean? Maybe they're not the right person for what you and your company wants to be doing. And, and you need to kind of evaluate that. Yeah, agreed. And really great comment. Like for, for a lot of people that are watching this right now, they're just like, I just don't know how to integrate some of this automation. It just for them, it's just like, I am the average investor. I own three properties. You know, what can I do to be more efficient? And, and you know, I'll, I'll just touch on a couple of things. Maybe you can highlight a couple of things too, Greg, but it's just like you highlighted the, the copy of a newsletter. The power of something like that is actually quite amazing, especially for those that have got money partners. Like if you were going to be, if you have got a money partner, and you provide them kind of an update on a monthly basis. Not a lot of investors do that, believe it or not. That's going to actually make you stick out a little bit more than everybody else because you're constantly providing updates. Secondly, why not do the same thing with your tenant list as well? Providing them updates. Hey, you know, in Vancouver right now, it's snowing like crazy. You know, giving them some direction in regards to um, snow removal or, you know, all sorts of different aspects that you can, you can highlight. Um, is there anything else that you can maybe suggest as well? Think about it from a real estate perspective, and maybe you, I'm sure you've got lots of examples, Greg, that you can. You can yeah, bring I, think, up. I think the two that you mentioned is is great. Like just the automations that are there from like people that are in your funds or investors that you're you're working with or, or co going co on deals with, like all of those, like the 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 updates, making sure all the data points come in, little even little tools. So I'm sure a lot of people listening in have heard of like a Canva or something where you just put a little yep, style. Canva's great, right? It goes yep, it yep. goes a long way. It doesn't have to be. 
I mean, I'm guilty of it too. I listen to the the big idea podcast of the guys in Silicon Valley where it's, you know, AI is literally just going to go pick your kid up from school and do all that stuff. Like that's not, that's not practical. That's not what we're, what, what we're talking about. I mean, there are little things, even on the, the, the deal research side, right. Where there, where there's tools out there that, you know, you can kind of automate your parameters and just pump deals into it and it'll do the quick analysis and it'll cool. spit out like red green essentially. And then it just kind of takes the 20 minutes times 10 deals that you're looking at. It takes that down to 10 minutes and you get the best three and then you can dive in and actually use your time. So just all of those little touch points, a quick Google search is the most dangerous thing in the game for any small business owner, right? Just do a quick Google search because I guarantee a tool is out there that might not be 100%, but it can do 80% of it and just dive in and get acclimated and, and start using it. That's the right answer. I think, you know, to everybody listening to this, you know, think, to think about 80% of that time just gone. Like, you know, just, you just referenced like the property analysis side. How great would that be is analyzing deals at a much more rapid pace so you don't have to do this. And then you're just kind of overlooking the numbers to make sure everything's checked and balanced to make sure it makes sense. Um, so where I'm going to kind of go with this now is actually more customer service. Um, and so when I think customer service, guys, and so for everybody that's kind of paying attention is like, again, we talked newsletter, uh, maybe even social media with your investment team, um, getting, you know, your sorry, social media, trying to prospect new clients. And maybe other different things. And the one thing that's kind of sticking out to me is uh, this balance of kind of AI, chat GPT, and more of a personal touch grid. And so um, I think there's that concern, at least for me anyway. I'm just like, there's, a lot of the stuff's going to become automated. And, you know, in some cases, especially date now, nowadays for myself, and I'm like, you can kind of see when content's been written by chat GPT, it hasn't really been taking the time to kind of finesse a few different aspects of it. Um, so maybe you kind of share your thoughts about balancing between automation and also maintaining a personal touch, uh, specifically when it comes to real estate investing. What are you seeing? What are you guys doing to kind of still have that kind of personal aspect to specific clients? Yeah, no, definitely. The on the um, on the real estate investing side of it, I, I, I like I said, AI is not it's not a hundred percent game right now you know what i mean I, I just listened to a podcast the other day and one of the big points they were hitting home is like everybody who say they do listings right so for all their listings this guy was an airbnb vacation rental manager it's like hey stop just having chat gpt write the entire listing because like number one all your listings look the same and number two it really doesn't give me the personal level of touch that i'm looking for um, so leveraging those tools, like you said, to do 80% of the lift and then use your time or your team time, team's time more efficiently to add the nuance in there, I think is, is super, super important. Um, obviously being a, a virtual staffing company, is something that we are, we're actively involved in, um, you know, outsourcing VAs, leveraging talent overseas. It's, it's evolved over the last 25, 30 years. Thanks to this, you know, little thing called the internet, which I'm sure everyone here has heard of. Um, I think I yeah, right. <laughs> and I, I mean, we've all kind of brass tacks. I mean, we've all called a call center, right? That's what a lot of people understand is what VAs are. And I can tell you now, it, that's the farthest thing from the truth. But we all are, we're all used to that, you know, ring, ring. You can tell your calls being routed. You get picked up with someone with a varying level of an accent that clearly isn't from Vancouver or Toronto or Montreal or Dallas. And it's very impartial. It sounds like they're reading a robo script. And that's not what virtual staffing is anymore. That's the stuff that AI is taking out, right? All of those very basic call routings, when you call your bank or you call your lender and you kind of get routed through the tree, that's where the AI is going to make the immediate impact. End of the day, real estate is a relationship game. So whether it's maintaining and leveraging relationships with local agents, local brokerages, um, you know, going out to coffee and just kind of networking and, and marketing yourself, uh, whether it's it's setting up calls with people who are in your market that you're looking to do deals with or people through incredible groups like this, where it's like, hey, you mentioned something. I'd love to connect with you and learn a little bit more about how you finance that deal or, or kind of what the framing was that you went through. That's the stuff that still needs a personal touch, I, I feel like, right, in, in, the, in the real estate game where you're leveraging those relationships. I mean, for those of you that are buying properties, I mean, we all know upkeep and maintenance on that property is the biggest headache once you finally get, you know, get that deal and you get the property and literally having a reliable local carpenter, electrician, plumber sometimes can like make or break whether a deal is profitable or makes sense long term for you. And how do you find those people and how do you make sure that you have constant, consistent touch points to maintain that level of service? 
It's picking up the phone. It's sending that personal email. Stuff that AI and, and full automation can't really do, right? I'm a big believer that speed of service is just 10Xing every single year. Yeah. You know, the first person that can get there, the person that can respond quicker, the person that can answer the email a minute faster than the other person is the person that's going to get that deal. And the person that can follow up with the lead or follow up on the paperwork or the financing or the data that you needed for the underwriting, the person who can get that done the quickest and most consistently is the person that's going to win that deal nine times out of 10. And that is really where when you talk about the personal versus the automated or the AI option, there just isn't a solution that I've seen that you can take the person out. And that's really where we help our, our, our customers, but our, our partners unlock that with VAs. Because like we just said, if you're the one owning every relationship with, a, with an agent or with your investor group or with all of your investors, and you're the one doing the pamphlets and sending them the underwriting data and collecting the underwriting data and it like, we're already talking about that's three days worth of work for one deal. You're never going to get it done. That's where VAs can really start unlocking time as well as like creating a better experience for you, the business owner, but also putting, getting you higher on the pecking order for each of those deals, for each of those communications yeah. with, with what you're trying to knock down. And that's where using VAs becomes real dangerous in a good way for you as a business owner, because at a fraction of the cost, you're now competing with, the local big time investor that's got a team of 50 and also owns a brokerage. Like now you, the one, two person team can compete with them and start to peck away and say, build your company to whatever size that, that you want it to be. Yeah. Very good. I, I lots of great insight there for everybody. And again, guys, if you're watching this, this is your opportunity to ask Greg questions, fill your boots. He's here for you guys. It's not like this is it. Like you got questions about automation. You got questions about anything about uh, streamlining your business. Talk about some of your most frustrating points. Let's let's open this discussion up. So, um, so let's let's kind of get into the dialogue about virtual assistants. Actually, now, so for a lot of people, Greg, this is your business. This is the company. Uh, it's in a virtual assistants company that I'm more than happy to share. To be very clear, I have a Rocket Station virtual assistant. I can't think of anybody better on my team than that person. Like they've been sitting my saving grace. Greg asked me this earlier. How's things been going? I'm like fantastic. It's been going great. And so with that being said, for a lot of people, first of all, is understanding understanding what help they need, what areas of focus they need. And then the question is, you know, where, where do I go to get that support? For a lot of you guys, you may feel like you're getting stretched right now. There's just so many things pulling you, pulling you away. So maybe you can highlight this may be the first time for a lot of people that are maybe open to hiring, but they don't know anything about virtual assistants in general. So maybe you could just elaborate and share what they are, what they do. Um, you know, what are some of the key tasks that they focus on just so our community can better understand it? Yeah, definitely. So, so VA here in the States, where we were joking about my military resale background, you do a Google search, it's veteran affairs, and that is not what a VA is. Um, so <laughs> it's, it's vir virtual assistance. And the biggest thing I want to get ahead of virtual assistance is for a quick Google search. Anyone, there's tons of great YouTube content. Some of us, we've got lots of great videos in education. That's what you want to do. If you want to acclimate yourself outside of this to what is a VA and what, what, what can they do? Um, most importantly, they're not just an assistant. It's, it's truly outsourcing, meaning whether it's HSBC, whether it's JP Morgan down here in Canada, big, massive fortune 500 companies, the major financial institutions have been outsourcing to countries that are not in North America for the last 15, 20 years with the internet, with how quickly business changed to this remote work set up during COVID that same level of professional. And I mean, we are quite literally talking and I'll speak to my staff, but you can find varying, I mean, you can find people with doctorate degrees that are virtual assistants that you can plug in mm. to your business. Everyone coming through Rocket Station, everyone's college educated. A lot of our people have advanced degrees like master's degrees. Um, so it's just allowing, I joke, we're, we're very spoiled here in, in North America. And, and because of that, things are a little bit more expensive. Um, there is so much talent worldwide that just because of the economies of scale for a, a Canadian real estate investor, for an American real estate investor, you can get somebody that in your local market might cost you 20, 25, 30, 40 bucks an hour mm. or a third, an eighth, a fifth of that amount. Um, so it's, it's really just the term VA. It's really just global workforce. It's uh, we're based in the Philippines. That's where we've got almost 2000 employees, but I mean, India, Eastern Europe, I mean, there's even 
American VAs and Canadian VAs, right? It's anybody who's kind of a remote hybrid worker um, that can be plugged into your business. And then just like just like hiring, there's definitely different levels to virtual assistants. I'm sure some of your listeners, there's a lot of great job board sites out there like Upwork or Fiverr. If you've ever yeah, had like Fiverr, a graphic yeah. done or a logo done, a lot of people go there. Um, big publicly traded companies that act as a job board, connecting people all over the world with business owners and entrepreneurs all over the world. Um, where where Rockstation has kind of carved out our niche is is specializing in this crazy world called real estate. So we touch real estate investing, property management. We have a big home service division, and training people doesn't matter if they're in Bangladesh or if they're in Burlington, Ontario. Um, there's always a level of screening, recruitment, training, onboarding that you have to go to. Um, I, I tell people the biggest mistake real estate investors make when they're trying to jump into hiring VAs is they, they try to treat a VA like the easy button. I, I'm not sure if this ran in Canada and the mm. US. There was a Staples commercial where you would hit, th that was easy and it was literally a button and Staples will solve your problems. That is not what VAs are, right? They're people. They're, they're people that you've got to define scopes of work and jobs and, and set them up for success and, and, and plug them into a process or a system or a need that matches their skill set. But when you find the right person and you go through that that recruitment, like I said, from an, the economic standpoint, I mean, if you're an upstart, if you're a part-time investor, probably the thought of hiring someone even part-time for 15, 20, 30 bucks an hour is terrifying because that's probably literally food off of your table. Um, it is, or, yeah. yeah, or if you're running a large scale operation, like you're, you're starting to realize that you know, to scrub my lists and format my data and get that in the CRM, like John, my data guy, it's awesome that he can turn that around in a couple of days, but I'm paying John like 120 a year or 90 a year. And I really don't want him doing that kind of basic rudimentary type work. So what's the other solution? That's where, that's where VAs kind of come into play. So it's, it's, it's anybody anywhere in the world. There's lots of different services out there. Ours is an end-to-end -end solution that help you kind of from beginning to end and the management like you were we were talking about earlier, oh, the accountability, the KPI tracking. And then there's options out there that are just placements or job boards where you, if you want to take on, um, take on the task of like finding and screening resumes and interviewing someone, there's kind of do-it-yourself options out there as well. Love it. Love it. So I'm recognizing a bunch of familiar faces on our, on the live right now for those that are watching that are part of our Elevate Masterclass and Mastermind Group, a lot of students and stuff like that. So you're like, okay, how do I build this in? How do I build some of these costs in? Here's a little bit of tip, a tip for everybody, right? I don't think we really talked about this, but you know, you know, I'll get to your question. I see you, Steve, um, in regards to the analysis side. But you know what? If this is something you guys are trying to scale in your real estate investing business, you, you've got visions of growing and you know that you're needing help, why not start to build some of this expense into your analysis as well as part of your property and property analyzer? You, you, you budget for property manager, you property, you budget for you know insurance, your property vacancy allowance or repairs. But if you're getting to that point where you are starting to grow and you're needing help, build some of that expense into your analysis. So then you know that you're being that you're also growing effectively as well. So um, this comes to the question that I've got for you, and it's specifically about scaling, actually. Um, so for a lot of us real estate investors, we, we've got a vision. We've got a vision for ourselves. We've got a vision for our company, what we want to, where we want to go, what we want to grow to. You know, how do we ensure kind of our, our virtual assistant is staying kind of on the same page as us? And maybe that's part of what you were just highlighting as well, is kind of setting them up for success. And you for success is having clarity of, what you want them to do, having them, having provide, providing them with clarity to what the vision and the goals are. Um, so maybe you can highlight to people what do they need to do to prepare before they bring in a virtual assistant, just so everybody understands it, to make it as efficient and effective for not just the virtual assistant, but also for the for the individual that's hiring them as well. Yeah, definitely. And and say if there's one big takeaway to earmark something. If you can take this very simple three-step process away from this, you'll be already light years ahead of, of other investors awesome. who are maybe trying to hire. So really, and we've already talked about one pretty in-depth. So there's discovery, there's process mapping and planning, and then there's the actual hiring and management of it. So we talked about the discovery. That's everything from the simple exercise like the oh shoot list to writing down everything you do during, you know, during the day. Um, 
I'm trying to think what else, or, or even say, say just kind of realizing that, Hey, you want to get to just doing these few things and everything else you got to get to someone. So there's that kind of internal reflection or evaluation of your current team to be like, what do I want yeah. them to do? What are they actually doing? What do I need to rearrange here? The second piece, and this is really the key to success. This is it's, it's the process mapping and planning phase. So a lot of investors, and I'm so, like I said, I'm sorry if we've got a lot of seasoned people here, but for the new, the new entrepreneurs, the people who are kind of stepping out of what we call like employee mode and starting to run their mm -hmm. own business, if you haven't already, you will very quickly realize that we were talking a lot about being the center of the web, being the person that every task is, you're the owner of it. The way to get out of that is through process mapping and documentation. And what that very means good. is you've got to have some level of formalized training or a checklist or a how-to for how you as the business owner want that job or that role or that task to be fulfilled. And that is really the biggest gap that we see why some people say they, they try to hire themselves locally, VAs, whatever. And the, on day one, that person comes in, you know, wide-eyed, bushy-tailed, ready to go. And the plan for them to get going is, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just watch me do this. Here's how I do it. Do you remember that? Is that good? Perfect. And the person tries, but doesn't necessarily connect, you know, two to two. So that's, that's where we always encourage people to go through that process mapping and what that means, what it takes different shapes, depending on the level you're at ideal world. And, and kind of what we do for our clients is creating process flow charts, creating checklists, standardizing your training material. We're all familiar with McDonald's. McDonald's doesn't make a great cheeseburger, but they have incredible processes and systems and it's how they were able to scale everywhere. So that's what we're talking, bringing that level of, you know, the Henry Ford assembly line into your real estate investing business. So when you're doing your due diligence on a deal, I'm sure there's very specific data points, very specific pieces of information you want to pull in to analyze, whether it's a spreadsheet or just you looking at it and kind of knowing. You need to codify that. You, if you want to, if you want to be the person who's just looking at the deals and analyzing it to determine whether it's good or not, but you don't want to be the person spending the hour, two hours, three hours finding that data and going into, you know, a CoStar or going into whatever data service you're using. You've got to codify how to use that tool that you're using to get the data, and then what data you want that is important. Um, so, so like I said, th there's many different ways. One, of, some of my favorite real estate investor clients to work with are the people that have like a software engineering or even just a mechanical engineering mm -hmm. background because this is their world, right? Most real estate investors, they're guys like you and me, right? They're the big charisma. They can negotiate a deal. We're not necessarily, <laughs> not to speak on your behalf, we're not necessarily the super process driven guys. The software engineers and the mechanical engineers, they I love them because they get it, right? They're they're not starting this because they, they necessarily want to be the face or the voice of it, but they get the process of getting a deal across the finish line. So before looking into hiring, before putting a job description out there, look at what you're doing. And once you've pinpointed those four or five things, whether it's lead management, whether it's the underwriting, whether it's the bookkeeping, the data, the due diligence analysis, whether it's managing your website, whatever it is, toss a screen recording, right? We use Zoom internally, but there's mm, Skype, there's a so million good. out there. The next time that you're going to go update a listing or the next time you're going to go create your investor newsletter, record yourself doing it. That's a very great rudimentary step in creating a process driven business, which going back to that idea of business owner versus self-employed, that's the gap, right? That's the gap is having the processes and systems in place so that you're scalable. Even if you're, you're, your goal with your real estate investing is just to have some extra money so you can take a vacation or wind down on your W-2, having those processes built early and, and, and having a level of detail where you think any new strategy I learn, any new market I go into, I want to figure it out, but then I need to codify it and I need to capture that data. That's the best attitude to have, especially in real estate. I've seen so many investors get so burnt out because once you do get your hand on it, it's, it's a process, right? It's the same rinse, wash, and repeat. That's where you can start to hire and leverage and get to your highest and best while making sure you have a very predictable pipeline of leads, a very clear underwriting due diligence process, a very clear process to manage the property once you have an under management. It's all through that documentation and information capturing that's going to allow you to get it off your plate. And I'll tell you as someone who for most of my life did the Hey, come here. I'll show you how it's done. You got it. Cool. Figure it out. 
it actually <laughs> allows you to take a breath as an entrepreneur, right? Because it it's all well and good to say, I'm going to hire someone and let them do it. But like, if you're a real business owner, like I said, it's your name on the door. You are going to go from being the person stressing because you got to do it to now the person who's stressing about what they're doing and how they're doing it. And you're going to micromanage and you're going to run people off and it's going to be an even bigger headache where the end game is, nope, I'm firing everybody. I got to do it. And then you're back to square one, right? That process, it gives you that confidence as an entrepreneur, right? Even outside of empowering the employee and allowing them to have clarity with what you want them to do and how you want them to do it, it's going to give you peace of mind as an entrepreneur as well, where you know you've given them the flight plan. And like I said, there, we can get into the weeds of like, then how do you hold them accountable? How do you manage them? But at the very least, it's going to give you clarity that you know the work is being done your way. And that's the first step in scaling yourself, scaling and multiplying your time and getting yourself to the reason or the actual why as to why you got into real estate investing. Awesome. Just such great information. So good. Thank you, Greg. That's awesome. Um, I'm going to, Greg, uh, Steve uh, just referenced here that um, you referenced about an automation deal analysis tool. Um, any recommendations that you have, I guess, for Canada, for use in Canada? There's lots of different programs out there. Um, I'll let you answer the question about an analysis tool. Um, but at the same time, you can always go use an analysis tool. But what you could even do is even better is working with somebody else that does the analysis for you. So maybe I'll, I'll let you answer that question if you don't mind from Steve. So. Yeah, definitely. And I know kind of overarching here, I know my exposure to the incredible virtual or the savvy investor group. I mean, there's tons of great people that you could probably post in there and be like, hey, what do you do and look at? And they could give you hundreds of years of experience as to how to do it. So definitely yeah. leverage them. Um, so Canada specifically, Steve. I'll give you some. We we have a majority of our business here in the States. We work with probably about 100 investors outside in Canada. So specifics to Canada, I'd have to follow up. There's some great ones. Uh, um, Roofstock has an incredible deal analysis tool. Um, Rentbook has another one. If you're looking to kind of do an analysis on acquiring a property and like what rental rates would be, uh, Rent Zend is another one. And then here, here in the States specifically, I think they touch Canada as well, Bigger Pockets. Has has a pretty pretty robust deal analysis tool um, that we know a lot of our clients tap into that allows you to kind of run those initial comps and plug in your ARVs and discounts and the monthly cash flow and kind of all those all those parts. So Roofstock, there's another one I think it's called Deal Check or Deal Checker. Um, deal Check. And then the, yeah. the bigger yeah Deal Check and then the, the bigger pockets tool as well is is really really good and, and robust from what we've seen. There you go. Perfect. Hopefully that answers your question, Steve. But like there's lots of different programs out there available um, that can help do this. So um, I know we're getting kind of close to the top of the hour, but there's a couple of questions I still want to ask you. So I'm like, I hope I can steal you for another few minutes a little mm -hmm. over time, um, Greg. And, and I guess maybe the first one is this. Um, what are you kind of seeing for trends right now, specifically with technology, virtual assistants and the real estate industry? Are you seeing anything specific that is kind of sticking out more than than others that that uh, is occurring in the business itself. I know we touched a little bit about this, but is there anything specific that that's really starting to uh, stick a little bit more specifically for in the real estate industry when it comes to both virtual assistants and technology and bringing this together to be much more being more effective? Yeah, definitely. And say reel me in if I kind of go off course here, but obviously, I mean, it's no secret, right? With kind of the influx of interest rates and the kind of diff different times that we've been through in the last 12 months, we've seen a lot of investors kind of take a bunch of different strategies. Well, some of our large institutional partners we work with, they've been, they've been going, they've been just acquiring smaller portfolio owners, smaller property management companies. They're seeing this as a, as a time to strike because everyone's kind of like, do I want to keep growing my portfolio? Do I want to maintain? Do I want to start selling it off? Um, on the other side, we've seen a lot of our um, kind of local or what I'll call like regionalized investors hold off and shift a lot of focus to the property management side. And specifically to like what that means for, for us as, as a staffing company, we're seeing a lot of people be very creative in how they are leveraging their virtual assistants. And, and keep in mind, coming out of COVID, the craziness of like the labor market and staffing and people not wanting to be in an office or wanting to be in an office. Like it's just been weird, right? I don't have all the solutions. I don't have all the answers. Just kind of responding to what I'm sure every single person here listening or maybe even personally has dealt with. I'm sure there's lots of people that they were sitting in an hour of traffic every single day and they haven't gotten out of yeah. their pajamas in three years to plug into a Zoom call. You know what I mean? 
<laughs> so so it, it's it kind of keeping this in the frame of like from a staffing perspective, I'll give you a very tangible example. Uh, 2020, 2019, if, if we were to tell a property manager like, hey, we could, we could hire virtual assistants that could assist you in your leasing process. We would have been laughed out of the door because what is a leasing? It's got to be someone there to show the property. They got to unlock the door. They got to walk them around and answer questions. Mm -hmm. Well, fast forward here, three, four years. And now that's not the case anymore. And we have clientele who they may have one leasing agent or they might leverage a local real estate agent, right? Because at least in the States, I think it's the same in Canada. You got to be registered to, to be a leasing agent and show yeah. properties. So, but, but all the paperwork. The, from the person inquiring on any platform or emailing or calling, answered by a VA. The VA can't answer pricing questions. They can't negotiate contracts, but they can answer the basics. And then when it hits a certain level where you have to have a license, boom, live transfer into that real estate agent. They're booking the appointment. They're, a lot of our clients are doing self-guided showings now where they've got a lock box mm. or a lock code, like a lock with a, a code on it that they're resetting the code and saying, perfect. You know, we need a picture of, of your ID submitted into the portal for verification. But then you've got between three and five this Sunday to go see it. Here's your code. That's all being calibrated by virtual assistants where that leasing agent, oh. all they need to do is step in when someone's like, yep, here's my application. Let's get going. So it's it's been awesome. Some of it we've tried to kind of push and, and test different things because we think we can do it. What's been really cool, Michael, is like seeing how clients who maybe we're just using some VAs for bookkeeping, right? Because it's very standardized yeah. back office processes. And they're like, I think this would work for my leasing contracts. I think this would work for my renewals. I think I think I could have them pull a lot of that, those data points for my underwriting process. Let's give it a try. Um, so so that's, that's what we're seeing is really through technology, through the change in consumer patterns, where whether it's your mortgage person, or if it's your potential renter, a lot of people don't, they don't want you near them. They don't want your germs. You know what I mean? So <laughs> if, if, okay, if this is the new platform of business, if it's a quick zoom call, or if it's a bunch of emails, or if it's an online software where we're uploading documentation, you could be sitting in Vancouver doing that because I'm in Vancouver or they have internet in Manila. They have internet in, you know, Eastern Europe, like, Let's try this VA thing and see if see if they can do it. So that's that's really what we've seen is as more of these, you know, I'll call them like core, whether it's investing processes or property management processes, as more of them are being put into technology and automated, it's unlocking a lot more, which like I said, now when you used to only have one leasing agent and they could only do a couple showings on the weekend, now that same leasing agent can go through 20 the 20 X the amount of applicants because the stuff that's really holding them back from using their time, which is this stuff in front of the computer, sending out contracts, refilling, following up with documentation, it's all being automated with a, with a virtual assistant sitting there side by side with them to keep them at their best and brightest. While all that other stuff that's candidly they're not good at and they don't want to be doing is being done through a process, through a virtual assistant to help everyone's time gets, get maximized tenfold. Yep. So good. So good. And really, here's a here's a little here's a little comment for everybody that's listening today. Is you know, there's always a, a, a to do list or a task list that you have when you hire a property manager. You you sign a contract based on a lot of the things that they're responsible for. The one thing I've always said, and our property managers are not going to like this, but it is you can always negotiate these things. Just to be very very clear, and there's stuff that I've negotiated with our property management companies that I've pulled a lot of that stuff away from them. And that's the stuff they don't like doing either. They don't really, they don't want to do as much as well. But I've saved a lot of that capital and brought that in house, but it's not really in house where it's involved with myself, but it's hiring somebody like this to help facilitate this at maybe at a lower price. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of things that you can have a lot more control of, uh, which can be very, very beneficial for you when you start to scale your business. But just things to start to take into consideration is how can I be much more efficient with my time, with my energy, even with some of the costs. And are there things that I can maybe integrate uh, or reduce some costs from one area so I can put it into a place like this as well, right? So let's kind of, you know, I'm going to take another five more minutes from your time. Um, with that being said, um, cost effective strategies specifically. So for people like, okay, you know what? I can't afford this kind of stuff and this is really expensive and they don't even know what the expense is, to be honest with you. But what are you seeing? So virtual assistant, people may or may not know what it is. Um, what is kind of the, what are some of the costs associated with this, and, and just what are some cost-effective strategies that you could recommend for people, 
maybe considering a, a VA uh, either now or in their future. Yeah, definitely. And like I said, I'll, I, I want to make sure I don't just turn this into a rock station sales plug. Obviously, I'm sure yeah. you got show notes. If people do want to talk, I encourage them to hit it. But I mean, you can go out there right now and if you say it's, it's all a trade off of time, right? There's a lot. I, I, I highlighted some of them Upwork, Fiverr, mm -hmm. onlinejobs.ph. There's tons. I mean, there's Facebook groups out there. You can get on Facebook and say, any investor group you're in, who's using VAs? Can you connect me? I mean, you're you're looking at someone who is a college educated, has, you know, speaks speaks very clear, fluent English, four, five, six bucks. If you hire them directly and work directly with them, right? Keep in mind, you got to spend time to find them and vet them. And it's it's just like hiring people. I know we didn't really get into this, but don't just because the price is discounted, don't discount how you hire them. And Adele, so I think true. I saw in the comments, put hire, slow, fire, fast. That's exactly right of people local. That's exactly right of VAs as well. Do your due Absolutely. diligence. Because like I said, there's there's tons of great talented people. I do not want to discount that. I mean, there's also people who who work the system, right? And, and it's it's when you're working with a freelancer and this isn't, let's say this isn't specific to VAs. This could be a freelancer that lives one town over that's doing a graphic for you. Money talks, right? So if they're a freelancer, <laughs> they're not tied to you and they're going to go and work and give their time because it is their time to who's paying them the most. Um, but no, for, from a financial standpoint, a lot of the stuff we've talked about, the underwriting, the bookkeeping support, the um, lead management, right? Lead flow, relationship manager with your investors, just an executive assistant. Hiring directly, I mean, four, five, six dollars an hour, right? And, and a lot of them offer the flexibility of like, if you only need a few hours a week, they'll work for you just a few hours a week. Um, and then like I said, services like ours that are more industry specific, there's a lot of training and due diligence and kind of prepping and vetting that we do. I, I always make the, the bad joke. And for my HR friends out there, it's, it's a good joke for you. There's a reason that like, there's, it's usually the C-suite at most companies that make the most money. And then the next highest paid person is the VP of HR. Like there's a reason for that because finding and managing talent is the hardest part of any business. Um, I agree. So there's services out there like ours where we're basically think of us as like your bolt on HR from the recruitment, the pre-training, the getting you set up as the investor to be successful with VAs and then matching you and managing them. We do that. And, and I mean, our, our pricing say it ranges anywhere from 12 to $15 an hour, sorry, 11 to $15 an hour. Um, and then all the way up there, like I mentioned, you can find people with doctorates and if any of that AI talk was kind of tickling you and you, you've gone down that rabbit hole and you're like, I'm going to build my own LLM. I mean, you could literally find people with doctorate degrees who are data engineers or some, whatever the heck they call them to build that, that for 50 bucks an hour, they'll do that for you. So I encourage everyone to kind of, number one, remember those three steps, go through the discovery with yourself and with your company, make sure you, you do the process mapping and implementation and put some kind of structure in place so that you can accurately tell this person and then make sure you spend your time um, with the, the screening and with the interviewing and making sure you find the right candidate. But I encourage everybody getting off of here, say, go, go Google virtual assistants, go, go to Upwork, click around, see it. Yeah. Get, you, you'll very quickly get a benchmark for kind of what like the cost is. And especially for the Canadian and American investors in here, you'll, and anyone who's tried to maybe hire locally, maybe hire someone and you're already going is on like your 2024 goals. You'll very mm -hmm. quickly be like, hold on. So this person's in Romania and they have better credentials than the person in Toronto I just tried to mm -hmm. hire, but they're $12 and that person is 120,000 a year. Like what? And I'll tell you, that's not false advertising. Do your due diligence. That's my disclaimer. But there's people with that level of brilliance and talent that can plug in. And when you talk about starting a fire, a good fire in your business to hit those goals, I mean, if you're leveraging talent at five, six times less the cost, you're leveling yourself up, you're leveling your team up, and you're doing stuff that your competitors simply are not doing just because they haven't found this. I love it, Adele, the magic wand of virtual assistant. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Um, we're, again, thanks for taking a little bit of extra time. I, I always like to leave with uh, kind of just a final takeaway for our real estate investors. So our savvy investors, maybe final words of wisdom for people that are looking to streamline their business just maybe using virtual assistance or even not, maybe just share your final takeaways and just future outlook just real quickly, if you don't mind, just as, as we wrap it up. Definitely. I, I, I encourage everybody, whether it's with a service like ours at Rocket Station or just yourself, in the next 45 days, if anything that we've said tickles you or you're like, that sounds good, just do it. Because like I said, at, at most, you give it a try, you burn a week, 
you maybe burn 100, 150 bucks, at least you've got a taste and you can understand how easy it can be. Hopefully you go find the, the perfect person and they're with you for the next 20 years. But if it doesn't work out, you at least kind of understand what it's going to take to be successful. So that would be my challenge to everybody is don't be scared of it. It's a very close knit world, despite what the news wants you to think, right? We are very, <laughs> very connected. That's as political I as I get, I promise. But we are a very, very, very globalized world at this point. And there are incredible people that you're talking to a guy that five years ago couldn't even point where the Philippines was on the map. And now I've got some very close friends, some incredible colleagues and a, and a company based <clears> over there <throat> that provides almost 2000, 2000 jobs. So I would challenge everyone the next 45 days, just try it. Even if it's, you want a logo redesigned or you want uh, go write a blog post, go spend a little money, dip your toe in, see what, see what it's like, see what the results are. Um, and then, yeah, if you want to really scale it and, and go give us a call at rocket station, we'll get you hooked up. Love it. Love it. Well done. Well done. So as we kind of wrap things up, Frank, you know, just truly amazing stuff, lots of valuable information. And for a lot of people, they're just like, okay, this is cool. I can get rid of this. I can get rid of all these tasks, that whole bookkeeping thing. Oh my God, no more bookkeeping. So anyway, just, I think part of it is just get clarity. It may not be right now, maybe in the future for yourself. It's about where your company is going to go. And as I shared before, is it's like, it's looking at your organizational chart first and then identifying that, okay, I'm putting myself on all of these roles. That may be the case right now. That's okay. There's that, that's just part of the growing and scaling business. But over time, what are some of the things that I want to start to delegate? Bookkeeper, property manager, those are the first two that always goes. So here's just yet another tool or another person in your team that you can maybe use at some point in time now or in the future as well for yourself. So um, Greg, real quickly, if they wanted to connect with you, Rocket Station, where's the best place to go? Yeah, definitely. So I know you'll, you'll have links at the bottom of the video and all the posts if you're seeing those. So definitely click on that. Um, going to rocketstation.com is our website. Yeah. And then for anybody say tuning in, I, I like to be as accessible as possible. So just my last name down here, um, brooks at rocketstation.com. Send me a quick note, introduce yourself. If, if we can even just help you, if there's any questions we didn't cover, say, I, I, give me, say, give me a, about a day to respond. I try to respond quicker than that, but I would love <laughs> to just be a resource to anybody in the savvy investor community. Um, whether say hiring now is the right choice or not. If you've tried, if you want to tell me your horror story, if you want to tell me about your amazing three VAs you've had for six years, would seriously love to hear from you and just reach out brooks at rocketstation.com or click the links below this video and, and hop on with myself and our team. And we'd love to kind of figure out where you're at. So um, for those that are wanting to set up a discovery call, this is kind of a little bit fun. So Greg and I did a rock, paper, scissors um, on this one. He said that he'd be willing to do a hundred dollar discount. I said a thousand, I won. And so just if people are wanting to use virtual assistants, this code specifically guys, just to be very clear, is if you would just want to learn about rocket station, it's a discovery call. So if you want to just reach out, connect, see, what they're all about and if you guys are wanting to do this in the future for yourself um, or if you're considering it they are very very kind greg was really nice in regards to offering savvy investors a thousand bucks off on the initial setup just use the coupon code savvy24 but the one thing that i want everybody to be aware of um, and the one thing i like about rocket station which i use um, they always like to have a discovery call first and foremost and they, they are very transparent and very open just to say yes, this is the time or no, it's not. And they'll give you some suggestions of things that you can do or not. Um, so like I said, at the very, very least, it might be worth the time just to kind of make a connection, uh, build some relationships because you just never know when that opportunity is going to be um, needed in the future for yourself. So uh, with that being said, Greg, I can't thank you enough for participating in this. It's, it's wonderful to have you here and share with our community. And uh, at the same time, look forward to having you back here again. Um, for those that are watching, I want, as, and we're wrapping things up at this moment, I just want to thank everybody for joining us today, people that are watching live. Um, and for those that are watching the recording, I'll give me a little, just as a reference, if you've got questions, throw them in the chat. I will do my part to answer them. If I don't know the answers, I will reach out to Greg to make sure that we get these answers answered for you. Um, last but not least, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our Savvy Investor channel. So it keeps you informed of upcoming videos because we've got a ton of training for you for 2024. So I'll just keep you informed when upcoming videos become available. So regardless if you're watching this live or recording, please leave your questions and comments. With that, we're going to wrap it up. So thanks for joining us. And I look forward to seeing you at our next Savvy Investor YouTube Live. Cheers.